Philadelphia Eagles have not played in a championship game since 1960. This year, Eagle coach Dick Vermeil welcomed the Dallas Cowboys, a team that makes championship games a habit. The two teams have played twice this season, and there is little they don't know about one another. What Eagle quarterback Ron Jaworski does know is that his receiving core is diminished by injuries. He will rely primarily on one tall target, the Philadelphia Tower, Harold Carmichael. On the other hand, Dallas receivers are fresh from a dramatic come-from-behind win over the Atlanta Falcons. Eagle fans are eager for their first championship in 20 years. It won't come easy. Dallas has played better football over the last six weeks and is in far better physical condition. But has an extra week of play taken its toll on the wild-card Cowboys? Can Cowboy Cool stand up to Eagle enthusiasm? These questions will be clearly answered as Dallas meets Philadelphia for the National Conference Championship in the NFL Game of the Week. The Cowboys' first offensive series was indicative of what they could expect throughout the afternoon. Dallas's primary offensive threat, Tony Dorsett, number 33, felt the Philadelphia heat early on. The Eagles' John Bunning, number 95, and Dennis Harrison, number 68, made the initial hits and inspired Dallas quarterback Danny White to throw on second down. It was Bunning again who sifted through a Dallas screen to meet Ron Springs, number 20, for a six-yard loss. After two attempts to move the ball laterally, Danny White went to the shotgun. Under pressure from Harrison and Claude Humphrey, number 87, White looked for wide open spaces and found them. The Eagle offense was as explosive as Dallas's was sluggish. It took the Eagles just 14 seconds to score. On their second play from scrimmage, Ron Jaworski went with Wilbert Montgomery, a back with bad knees. Two yards later, the Eagles had their first score of the game. Montgomery had been plagued with knee problems all season, but gave little evidence to that effect. The run was Vintage Montgomery, who doesn't believe in going with the flow. The Cowboys couldn't shake the effects of Montgomery's run and the next 15 minutes belonged to the Eagles. Jaworski played the short passing game, first connecting with Harold Carmichael, number 17, then with a first-year man and first-time starter, Rodney Parker, number 83. Cowboy pass rush was effective to some degree as tackle Randy White, number 54, went after Jaworski untouched. But Jaworski beat the rush with a short out to Wilbert Montgomery for 14 yards. On top of accounting for over 100 total first half yards, Montgomery knew precisely where to fumble out of the danger zone. Though Jaworski completed just seven of 17 passes in the first half, he located five different receivers, including reserve running back Billy Campfield, number 37, who showcased Philadelphia's backfield depth. Much of the Eagles' offensive success was a result of containing the Cowboys' all-pro tackle Randy White, number 54. On a typical play, White's presence was minimized by three Eagle blockers. While one side of the Dallas defensive line was neutralized, the folks on the other side provided resistance inside the 20. On successive plays, John Dutton and friends stopped Wilbert Montgomery. 
Then Cowboy defensive end Harvey Martin buried Ron Jaworski for the first sack of the day. The Eagles were forced to attempt their second field goal of the half. The first was blocked, and the second began with a bad snap. Kicker Tony Franklin revived memories of Garo Yepremian and Super Bowl VII. Fortunately for Franklin, a startled Harvey Martin could not hold on to the ball. It has been an off year for Franklin, whose shoe is always on the other foot. The Cowboys had gotten a break, and it was time to shake things up. Tom Landry usually has a trick play on hand for playoff games. But a double reverse to Butch Johnson was only a mild surprise, and gained but five yards. The next time Johnson got the ball, he was not so fortunate, thanks to cornerback Herman Edwards, number 46. Midway through the second period, Dallas generated their only scoring drive of the day, sparked by Tony Dorsett, number 33. The 18-yard pickup was a result of a screen pass that never fully developed. It was Dorsett's speed that made the difference, plus a solid downfield block by Drew Pearson, number 88. Pearson then went from blocker to receiver, recording a 12-yard gain to the Eagle 20. For the final 20 yards, the Cowboys played straight-ahead football, nothing fancy. Five consecutive running plays, including three by fullback Robert Newhouse, number 44. Tony Dorsett was given the scoring assignment and responded with a three-yard touchdown. On opening day, Dorsett scored the Cowboys' first touchdown. On this afternoon in January, he scored their last. In the first half, Doomsday had again asserted itself. After Wilbert Montgomery's touchdown on the Eagles' second play from scrimmage, the Dallas defense shut out Philadelphia's attack. The frigid weather conditions had shaped the pattern of the game. The ability to run the football would, in large part, determine the NFC champion. Eagles continued to feature their ball control offense, highlighted by number 31, Wilbert Montgomery. But the Dallas flex defense, anchored by Randy White, number 54, was primed to stop a running game that netted over 100 yards in the first half. Philadelphia's passing attack was designed to control the ball. Short passes to their backs. But Anthony Dickerson, number 51, disrupted the Eagles' strategy with this interception of a poorly thrown Jaworski toss. Once more, Doomsday had bent, but had not broken. The interception was only the beginning of a third quarter that was to be filled with turnovers. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, when the mistakes were tallied, Dallas had made more. James Jones' fumble of a Philadelphia punt was quickly followed by a Danny White cough-up. The Cowboys' sleek offensive machine was most certainly out of order.
Another look at the miscue shows that defensive right end Carl Hairston, number 78, took an outside rushing route, using his quickness to overcome number 67, Pat Donovan, to get to the quarterback. Despite great field position, Philadelphia settled for a field goal and a 10-7 lead midway through the third period. Enough was enough. The silver and blue empire from the southwest was ready to strike back. With 10 touchdown passes in his last three games, Danny White went to the air to get the Cowboys' offense untracked. A 28-yard pass to Jay Saldi swung momentum in Dallas's favor. But the game's next play would go a long way in shattering the Cowboys' Super Bowl dream. Tony Dorsett's fumble was recovered by the Eagles. Perhaps the most revealing statistic was that late in the third quarter, the Cowboys had run only 10 offensive plays in the second half. An NFC championship game is a place for old friendships to be renewed. No bitterness and dislike between these two teams. Good feelings abound everywhere. Like this getting reacquainted party, thrown by the Cowboys' Charlie Waters. His guest, none other than Philadelphia's Harold Carmichael. But now back to the action, where the real fun and games are. The Eagles' principal offensive weapon was their ground game, and that meant Wilbert Montgomery. Montgomery's slashing style has defined Philadelphia's attack for the last three years. Against the Cowboys, he carried more than the football. Montgomery carried Philadelphia's Super Bowl hopes. But it was his running mate, Leroy Harris, number 20, who turned the dream into a reality. While Montgomery is the thoroughbred, Harris is the plow horse. Against Dallas, Harris looked like Secretariat. Harris's nine-yard touchdown run gave Philadelphia a 17-7 lead entering the fourth period. Would the Eagles, a team built on character and determination, succumb to another Dallas fourth-quarter comeback? In the second half, Doomsday had folded its tent. The Eagles ran almost at will against the Cowboys' flex, a defense designed primarily to stop the run. Wilbert Montgomery was again Philadelphia's meal ticket. Montgomery rushed for 194 yards against Dallas, 55 on this fourth quarter zigzag through the Cowboys' secondary. A second look points to Montgomery's strength, his knack for cutting back against the grain, forcing the pursuit to run past him as he charts his downfield course. formula was not complex. They were simply outplaying the Cowboys on the line of scrimmage. An interception on the next play by Dallas's Aaron Mitchell, number 34, could not dispute the fact that Philadelphia was dominating the game, both offensively and defensively. The Eagles were taking it to the Cowboys. Philadelphia fans knew it and loved it. Trailing by 10 midway through the fourth quarter, Dallas's only hope was to attack an aggressive Eagles secondary. But there would be no cowboy comeback in this game. 
White threw for only 127 yards. The Cowboys' offense never got going. For the Eagles, an unlikely hero was emerging. Leroy Harris, number 20, had quietly sparked Philadelphia in the second half. Just another faceless ditch digger in most games, Harris grabbed a share of the spotlight with some old-fashioned, hard-nosed power running. Harris's second effort fueled a final Philadelphia surge that sealed the verdict in the Eagles' favor. The drive was typical of the Eagles' performance all day, workmanlike and efficient. The game had hinged on two factors, Philadelphia's defense and their running attack. Wilbert Montgomery proved to be the difference as the Eagles controlled Dallas's intimidating front four, rushing for 263 yards the most ever against the Cowboys in a playoff game. When Tony Franklin split the uprights at the game's two-minute mark, the Eagles were on their way to Super Bowl 15. In an ironic twist, Philadelphia had beaten America's team by adhering to a uniquely American credo, old-fashioned hard work, and the Cowboys knew it. For the second time in three months, a team and a city experienced a championship. For the Eagles, the dark Sundays of gloom and despair now took their rightful place in Philadelphia sports history to be forever buried. For a decade and a half, the Eagles were the Bermuda Triangle of pro football, a team where hopes and careers vanished without a trace. The 1980 Philadelphia Eagles emerged from the troubled waters of their past and stood on the threshold of a new beginning. The Eagles were the champions of the National Football Conference. achievement the Dallas Cowboys knew well, but Danny White could not overcome the force of a town starving for a football championship. The Philadelphia Eagles, the NFC's representative in the Super Bowl.